There we go. All right. Hiroshi Yamauchi. Uh, well done. Uh, this is a really good game. Um, so yeah, I guess now is the time to talk about my thoughts about this game. It is very good. I can see why people have this as their favorite. I kind of think that's partially due to it being maybe their first game they ever played. The Fire Emblem Game Boy Advance games. Um, but no, it, it's very good. Oh, the heroes who saved Elib. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Roy returned home to rebuild the lands and Lysa that were ravaged by the war. He was always popular with the people and was well remembered long after his tenure as Marcus Ferre. 136 wins. Nice. Roy the Young Lion. Oh, they're actually interspersing the credits with the directors with the, the endings of all the characters. Okay, fair enough. I guess I'll talk about the, the game at the end because uh, there'll be all of the different characters that say they died at the end. Divine Dragon Fae. After returning to Nabata, Fae was never heard from again. Many historians are skeptical that she even existed. I guess that would be up to uh, interpretation if you never saw them ever again. Base design, Sachiko Wada. Uh, I have to say, the portraits in this game were very good. And obviously, graphic cheese, Masahiro Higuchi. They're probably the guys responsible for all the good GBA battle sprites. Saul, the amorous priest. Although the church offered him the position of bishop, Saul turned it down and chose to serve the people in his own way. His behavior always led to difficult situations. Oh, thank you very much for that, uh, 007. Uh, cheering with, uh, wow, 979 bits. Thank you very much. I think, yeah, I haven't actually uploaded a, a Pokemon badge for that one. Uh, because that is a thousand in total. So thank you very much. Uh, I'll make sure to do that for the next uh, next time we do that. Delightful noble Lelina. After returning home, Lelina became the new Marcus of Ostia and shortly after was wed to Roy. Together, Roy and Lelina united Lycia to create the, pre pre uh, the peaceful and prosperous kingdom of Lycia. So that's the paired ending that Roy and Lelina got. And that's a nice ending. I do like that. I think Roy can also get paired ending with Sue, but that doesn't seem as right. That doesn't seem as good if you didn't take the sake route. Um, yeah, Laram, the sprightly dancer. Laram continued to travel around the world as a dancer. Her energetic dancing touched the hearts of many, and her unique style was passed on through many generations. I have to admit, I like the dance sprite animation. Um, I think Tethys's is like nicer to look at. It's more flamboyant, but this one's quite nice with a little heart coming up. Alan, the Fiery Knight. Upon returning to Foray with Roy, Alan assisted as Lord in re rebuilding the trampled land. His fiery passion and powerful will were inspiring to many. Same number of wins as Roy. Like, that's boosted because Roy got all the mana kits at the end, but that's pretty decent for the pair of them. Oh, that's what I did. I did the, the Animal Crossing uh, bell bag for a thousand bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do like that one. Ebony Lightning Zeiss. Zeiss aided Guinevere in rebuilding Burn. As he rose in rank, he was criticized for allying with Etruria, but his firm loyalty to Guinevere earned him the respect of his peers. And also, this credit scene is going to show how many people died in my playthrough. And I had to restart because I had to restart. So obviously you saw Zeiss was one there, um, but he's required for the final ending to get the... He's required to get the Gaiden chapter that is required to get the final ending. So, yeah. Lone Swordsman Rutger. Rutger disappeared without a trace after the war. He was reportedly sighted in various places around the continent, but his name only appears in the records of the war. So Rutger was pretty decent uh, for boss killing, I have to admit. Like, the, the Armor Slayer with Murdoch kind of cemented Rutger as one of the top five units of this playthrough, I think. Um, I, I don't know whether I'm going to do, like, a, a ranking of who the top five are, because Roy came in really handy right at the end. Traveling the Mage, Hugh. Numerous nations sought Hugh's service, but he declined them all and stayed independent. He always struggled financially, but his magic skills ensured his legacy. Like, Hugh did surprisingly good for the amount of time he was around for. And I'm just thinking back to, he could have technically been worse if I decided to pay him less. Like, his stats would have been a lot lower. But yeah, top five units, I'm not sure. Shadow of Ostia, Astolfo. After the war, Stolfo's name disappeared from all records. It was said that he supported the reconstruction effort in Ostia, but no one knows what became of him. 
Astolfo did what he needed to do. Like, having 11 strength and 20 speed was actually pretty decent. Uh, there we go. Localization. We get the actual people doing the fan translation. The Fire Emblem community. Yes. There we go. Translation thanks as well. Thank you very much, guys, for this translation. Uh, I'm told it's one of the best ones. Is that all of the people? Special thanks. Have they... No, they've not gone through all the other units. They went through all the units at the end of the game. At the final chapter. Right, I see. That makes sense. Because I'm like, oh, they skipped some people. Like, Masahiro Sakurai and the staff of Super Smash Bros. Melee. Of course, of course. And I'm sure these um, ending screens would look a lot better on a, a Game Boy Advance screen. I like that. But the fact that they actually reference Smash Bros. Because, yeah, without it... This wouldn't be a thing people would not know about Fire Emblem. So. But yeah, top five units of the run. I don't know. Uh, is that... Yeah, that's supposed to be Guinevere. With her ascension. Like, Alan definitely is one. Rutger is another for boss killing. Saul, I guess? Oh, yeah, this is going to show off. It shows off how long I spent on the turns as well. Interesting. Most games don't show this. They show the number of turns it took, but not how much time it took as well. And that's how I got into this as well, through Smash Bros. Yeah, well, it's how everyone got into it indirectly. Oh, look at that, 223. 29 turns and 14, 32 turns, oh my God. What was 16? I don't even remember now. 14 I know was the desert chapter, but. 35 turns, 31 turns, oh. and two turns for the final chapter. Turns were way higher because of supports. I had 90 plus turns to drum up support. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. Oh, look at the survival. Look at the survival rating. It's going to be awful. Ah! <laughs> and XP, of course, as well, because no one promoted. Uh, Oh, okay. I'll take a B. B is nice. B is nice. Oh. That's kind of a shame that they don't show the endings of all the characters. They only show the ones that came to the final chapter. Because other games don't work that way. But, but yeah, top five units of the run. Roy, Rutger, Saul, Alan, Belina. But then Hugh comes into it as well. Melody, I don't think, did as much. Um... Sue was surprisingly good when I could use her. Thea was surprisingly bad when I could use her. Um, yeah, let's see. What happens if I do this? Oh, here we go. All right, fair enough, fair enough. So Melody helped Guinevere rebuild Burn. Sue fell in battle in Chapter 23. Yeah, I know, I know. Thea died three times. Oof. Became the new flight leader and died, continued his mercenary life. So that happened in the desert chapter, I think. Uh, Sin, the Falcon of Sake, fell in battle in 23. Gonzalez returned to the Western Isles because somehow he managed to survive the whole time. Ogie, little hero, traveled as a mercenary. That was kind of useless. Fur, fell in battle when she didn't need to. Could have recruited Corel, but oh well. Chad, the Lycian Wildcat, worked to help orphans. Ellen fell in battle as well, because, you know, chapter 21's hard. Bath, the solid knight, rebuilt the Ostian army, didn't do anything. Ray fell in battle, again. Yeah. 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 What are you going to do? The dark child. Trek, the sleepy knight, fell in battle. Yep. Noah fell in battle. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, dear. King! Ocean King Geese fell in battle. Kind of useless. Lou also fell in battle. That was just a stupid mistake from my part. That shouldn't have happened. Shanna, the fr sprightly flyer, fell in battle. Yeah. Lots, the quiet axeman, returned home to live happily because he wasn't good enough to bring along. There'll be 13 fell in battles. I would imagine so. They might all be done now. Lance helped rebuild Foray, and Bors worked to rebuild Ostia. Because who's left? All the pre-promotes are left? 
Oh no, Clarine, yeah. Clarine fell in battle. Six chapters. And Marcus retired and enjoyed his life. Good for you, Marcus. Walt fell in battle because Rutger killed him. Ward helped develop the Western Isles. Walt literally won one battle. Dorothy, pure archer, returned to her old life. Zealot, the Night King, helped rebuild Ilya. Night King is a cool title, I gotta say. Gwendolyn, adorable knight, lived as a knight of Ostia and did nothing. Klein became an Etrurian ambassador, also couldn't do anything because he's promoted. Master Thief, Kaff, travelled the world as a thief. Oh, yeah. Cecilia worked to rebuild Etruria. Sophia returned to Nabata. Died twice, but she was required, so... Igreen returned to Nabata. The knightly ideal Percival rose to the top of Etruria's military, and Garrett led a humble life. I'm just trying to think of how good this... Percival would have been in this playthrough. Douglas retired and lived peacefully. Nime disappeared in the mountain. Juno, the winged legend, continued to work as a Pegasus uh, King Elamine, and Yoda continued to spread the word of Saint Elamine. Yeah. There we go. Whew. So, yeah. End credits. That's a long end credits roll, I have to say. But no, I enjoyed my playthrough of this game. I'm glad I actually finally went through it. Um, yeah, I can see why people like it. I also understand why it's incredibly brutally difficult because ambush reinforcements are... I don't think they're ever a good idea. Um, even if they give you advance notice like, hey, Rutger's gonna appear. It's like, you can't plan for where and when and how strong they are and what they'll do. So, I don't like ambush reinforcements. Um, I mean, again, because I did a no promotions run rather than like a normal run, I made the game harder than I needed it to be for the ambush reinforcements and they kind of probably expect you, hey, use all the pre-promotes because, you know, you might as well. But I felt like doing it a bit differently and yeah, like I said, I'm glad I did it. Um, what else about this game? I guess this is like the legacy of, you know, Fire Emblem in the West. Obviously this never has, never got an English translation, but without this game existing, we wouldn't have the English translation, if that makes sense. Like it's because Melee Roy got popular, but Fire Emblem was already released. Fire Emblem Binding Blade was already going to be released. It just wasn't released in the, in the West. So then they decided to do the English translation, and that's why uh, we have Fire Emblem now. But yeah, I am glad this exists, and I would like there to be a remake of this game. I kind of hope there would be with Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. I I'm glad that exists, but I, I would hope that there's more of these um, for the Fire Emblem Echoes franchise. You know, they go through Fire Emblem 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever. But yeah, that is the run. That is done. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you've appreciated this uh, this crazy run of mine. Um, I hope it's not been too aggravating to try and work through it. But we got it done eventually. 